you go. My name is Ed McCaffrey with TopCon. This is the TopCon Sirius Pro. It is a plane that is upgradable to RTK. Uh, it will capture between uh, 30 to 40 million points in a 45 minute flight. Uh, it's going to give you two to five centimeter resolution depending on height. Uh, you can fly it in the rain. You can. Can you set up to 25 mile an hour winds? You can handle up to 45 mile an 45 hour winds. Miles. <laughs> um, I've flown it personally at 43 miles an hour. It was blowing so hard it knocked the case over, but it still flew, and the, more importantly, the data was really good. Um, okay. And, and uh, so you said flight time is a bit less than an hour. Yep. And you have two cameras right now. You have the the red, RGB, green, blue. RGB and the near infrared, which is separated out, so it's more like a multi-spec. Most RGBs are RGBs. Most of the near infrareds are relative to each other so that if you're going to get uh, fly today and it's a seven and a four tomorrow might be you know an right. eight and a five right this one will always be seven and four seven and four seven and, four. and you get this is a lease or this is a buy thing or how do you guys have this, uh, set up? this, this is a buy um, we have been in the u.s since january we've been in europe for two and a half years and so what's the buy so, so if we have the baseline if you had the base and the just RGB. It would be 37,000. Okay. If you have a TopCon base unit that you want to use for the RTK, it would uh -huh. be 52,000. Okay. And if you want the base and the RTK unit all fixed in an internal base, it is 64,000. Okay. Basically the price difference of the RTK board. And you're saying people are using these in all different environments? You're saying conservation stuff? Conservation uh, construction, stuff. Construction, whatever. Construction, mining, yeah. agriculture, forestry, gas and oil pipeline. It's a really ideal s solution because you can cover such a large area without having to put people in a dangerous position. Uh, I don't have to be in the flight plan in order to fly to it. Uh, I can also fly the unit. If I have battery and it's circling above me, I can upload the next flight plan and send it somewhere else so I don't have to land it just to do it. If I take manual control of it, I can take it manually, I can take it automatically, or I can land it in an auto assist mode so that it's a little easier to control and, and have where I want. If I take control of it at any point, bring it down so that, for example, an airplane that's in the area, I can let it clear, and then I flip it back into the automated mode, and it'll go back, leaving up where it takes took off and continue the flight path. And one the, and one other thing that's yeah, yeah. really important and really different, this takes shots by GPS position, not by time. So instead of taking a shot every half second, where in a windy day you're going to get click, 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 and then it turns and you get click, right, right, click, right. it's going to take it by GPS position so your data is always very consistent. So there's almost no overlap there. You can set what you want the overlap to be, both in front uh -huh. as well as in the side. Interesting. Okay, cool. And you said that the U.S. version has a three-mile Three-mile radio link. Cool. Uh, they do make one out of the country that's closer to six. And you said that you've been in the U.S. for a few months and in Europe for two years so far? A little over two years in Europe, and uh, we have been in the U.S. since January. Awesome. Well, Ed, thanks for showing us the Sirius, and I'm sure my students are going to be super excited. Great. <laughs> thanks, Ed.